entire time that uh, through a television screen of Terry Taylor. Is there any truth to that rumor? Uh, probably. I, uh, you know. Yeah. It was a rough. It was a rough uh, time. I mean, yeah, there was this, I mean, things would be, you know, it's so chaotic down there, you know, it's like, it was brutal, you know. And uh, one day in your time at WCW, towards the end of it, um, you came out and on live TV, you gave a shoot promo on, on Ric Flair, and obviously you had held those feelings for a while. What finally made you snap that night and go out and basically... Well, but that was... That was in the NWO, you know. So yeah. we'd go out and kind of interview on anybody, any any time, you know. It didn't have to make sense, you know. At NWO, we'd attack everybody, you know. I mean, I just, you know, I said, fuck it. I'd just say, do the interview on Flair. I don't, you know. I think it was, like, so close to the truth, you know. <laughs> Everything I said, you know. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I, after I did that, I expected, you know, maybe a confrontation in the back, you know. So I got to go back, and he, somebody said he went in the room and started crying, you know. So, fuck him. I and then and him and his buddies, you know, J.J. Dillon was a motherfucker, tried to get me fired, you know. First they tried to spend me, take me money, and, which didn't work, you know. They tried to get me fired. And, but that's the politics back, that's the way it was back then, you know. Kevin Sullivan, the story that he was genuinely scared that there was going to be a showdown with you and Flair, and I guess Kevin had talked to you at one point. A showdown? I mean, Flair's a fucking pussy, huh? As a matter of fact, the next day I went, we were doing taping of a thunder, you know, and they, that's when they had told me, you know, like, oh, we're going to send you home, we're suspended, you know, and so I just, fucking time off, you know. So I was walking through the parking lot back in, and Flair comes up, and I said, motherfucker, I was going to punch him in the then, you know, and he, he starts running, you know, I, I didn't have nothing to do with it, you know what I mean, he, he, what do you mean you didn't know, why you know about it then if you don't have nothing about it, you know, because you're just getting to the building, you know, so, now nah, he was, and not too long after that, uh, that was the end of WCW, did you have any idea it was going to be the last um, Nitro, the day that you showed up? Uh, there was rum, there was, oh, you know, two weeks before, no, you know, actually we really didn't know until we got there, you know, but there had been rumblings that, you know, there, it was going to be sold, you know, because that's when, there, there's other factors, you know, like, because AOL was involved at that time, you know, and they got rid of baseball and the basketball, so. But that was all a shady deal. I, I always thought that was a shady deal, how Vince got control of that, you know. So, but no, once we got, we didn't really know until we got there, you know. So do you think, yeah, what do you think ultimately led to the end of WCW? Was it the AOL deal or what yeah, it was, to do? Yeah, yeah, it was just a whole bunch of different factors and the fact that we were losing money too, you know. Like, I don't know how you lose money when you're selling out of it almost everywhere you go, you know, drawing the ratings that you were drawing, you know, and it's like, fucking Bischoff and Hogan, fuck that all up. So, uh, you let your contract run out when you were finished, and then you ended up uh, going to WWE again, and the WCW guys that had been there before you, all of their uh, careers were pretty much brought down because they destroyed were you fearful of that at all going in? Uh, well, it was on my mind, you know. At, but at the time, you know, I had I had nerve damage in my foot, so I really didn't wasn't really planning on going, you know. But they made me an offer that was, you know, pretty good, so I took it, you know. And they knew my foot was bad, you know. And uh, you know, I did what I could do, but you know they. They obviously took personal that we had beaten them for 83 weeks straight, you know, so they wanted to show who what was a better company, you know, so they, I mean, they, they treated everybody the same, and 
basically like shit, you know. Me, Kevin, Nash, and you know uh, Goldberg, they all basically treated the same way, you know. And you worked with uh, Stephanie McMahon and when you first came in. Do you have any memories of what that was like? Yeah, I was just that was Triple H's wife, so you know, and it was Vince's daughter, so. It was basically just the extension of Vince, you know. So it wasn't uh, too fun having to do it the way you wanted to work. No, I, I, I had preferred to go on a you know, different show. I didn't really want to go on Raw. I'd rather have been and go on SmackDown, you know. But they wanted to push me to wrestle Triple H, you know, so. And uh, did you enjoy your feud with Triple H? I mean, I, man, nah, not really, you know, I mean, it was all right, but it was like, it was all so one-sided, you know, so. At one point, uh, I know you had a lot of animosity towards him, and that kind of smoothed over and out. Well, I didn't have, I really didn't have, Maybe it was at the, out of proportion what people were saying. Well, it was like, I didn't. You know, I was up there with a, you know, bad ankle with nerve damage, you know, and, but I didn't find out what was being said until I left, you know, and then he went in the newspaper and said some stuff about me, you know, so I just said some stuff about him, you know, I, and I, my, my trash talking was better than his, you know. And uh, then you went to your first run in TNA from there. Was that more enjoyable than your second run? In TNA? Yeah. Uh, I, was that a page of things, basically? I mean, I, when I first went in, it was like, that's when, you know, Jeff was running everything. It was like, that was before they had to deal with Spike TV, you know. It was another place to work, another place to try to get, to get, to get going, you know. And then, uh, you know, we just tried to make it another place where you can make money, you know. And it was doing good. Do you remember uh, any matches that you particularly enjoyed in that, that first run in TNA? No, I think the, the, the thing that really kind of caught on with the fans and the, and the people in the, you know, rate, bought the ratings up was the main event mafia. That was probably the best time in there, you know. Yeah. And then... Uh, and they just killed that for whatever reason, you know? So, and then two months later, Hogan and Bischoff came in and they just tried to kill everything, you know? And uh, Russo was kind of back in the mix of things, writing in TNA um, when Jarrett was running it. And he was still writing for them until recently. Do you think he learned from some of his WCW mistakes? TNA writing because uh, a lot of people are always confused why he had a job for so long after the WCW mistake. So there must have been some positives to it. Yeah, you know it's hard to write a show, you know, week after week. You know, but his his hands were tied a lot too. You know, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes too. You know, so. So you did, you did depart TNA once. What was that about? Just is it was time to move on? Oh, when I left right after made a made a bit Yeah. Well, that, that yeah, that was that was when Hogan and Bischoff came in. They, you know, freaking buried everything. You know. So then they, what happened is that when we we're gone, and they wanted to bring back. Um, something that, you know, drew the ratings. So they contacted me, Kevin, and Booker again, you know? Yeah. And they, you know, offered a shitty contract, you know? It was like, they actually called, said to my guy, he said, well, we'll give you this contract, see if you can get over. They said it to me and to Kevin, and I was like, all right, motherfucker, you can see if I can get over, okay. It kind of pissed me off, but it was like, I, I don't, and I'll prove myself again, you know. 
And then what happened was they pissed off Kevin and Booker and they told him to fuck off and they went they went off when they did the Royal Rumble, you know. So that kind of pissed off the people at Spike TV, you know, because they were going to be promised it. Because, you know, if you remember, like, they, prom they uh, promoted, like, us coming back, you know, yeah. for a good two months, you know. And then, then they... Uh, Booker's still up there, and Kevin's, you know, still do with the Legends contract, so that that pissed a lot of people off on Spike TV, you know, so. And a lot of people thought you were fired from TNA, and that's what led to the whole um, stuff that's going on with Bischoff and Hogan now, but uh, you were offered a, a contract, right? Yeah, they offered me extension in uh, November they offered me one in December and January and as I never signed them you know because that at that point I could see what was going on you know and it's like uh, that's what was really starting to piss me off you know and I really <laughs> started to find out what pieces of shit Bischoff and Hogan really were you know uh, and they were pissing me off because they were, like, doing it to my friends, you know, like, guys that you were trying to build Teen Ed with, with Rude and AJ and especially Kurt Angle, you know. I mean, they, they, he went on, you know, in the media markets on radio and, and they were, were burying them, you know. And they really didn't understand it, like, I mean, because it makes no sense, you know what I mean. But if you've been around it before, you realize what's going on, you know, and they couldn't really relate to what was going on because like why would you do that you know so I had had enough you know so that, yeah and that's what led me to start telling the truth about you know bitch off on Hogan and they didn't really like it you know I, you know I, I warned him I told him it was it was not gonna be nice man I told him that and I told that to Bischoff and fuck him it's still not over you know I'll see those guys again. So in, I know a lot of people misunderstand and they think it's a personal thing, but in reality, you're just worried about the company. You feel that its future is well, in jeopardy. Oh, it's definitely in, in, in jeopardy, you know? I mean, look, they're it's losing money. It's, ratings are bad, and it's like, how can you not look at those two guys, you know? They haven't performed, you know what I mean? Everybody's got to, you know, got to perform... You know, and how come they're not accountable for, you know, the, the shit that they're putting on TV, him pushing his son, fucking Hogan pushing his fucking cunt, worthless daughter, and can't sing or dance, you know? And it, it's, 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 it's embarrassing, man. So. And ratings have not moved since all those big stars were brought in, like. Yeah, I mean, and, it, yeah, and they're losing money because they've got to pay their, you know, their contract. I mean, it's. No way would that work in a normal business setting. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they've been there for almost three years now, and they haven't done anything to spike the ratings. Like, that would not work in in a normal, you know? If you don't perform, you, you lose your job, you know? It's like, but they're just, you know, they know how to talk to... They know how to talk to Dixie. Yeah. That's the reason why they haven't been... Uh, right. There's yeah, no, there's no evidence that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like it's in black and white, man. It's ratings are what drives wrestling. You know, it's always been like that. And for that to like turn their back on, you know, they always, you know, Bischoff and Hogan always seem to brag. Oh, we beat uh, WWE 82 weeks straight. You know, yeah, we beat them because Nelson ratings ratings said we beat them. Well, now that meant something back then, but they don't mean that's something now. You know what I mean? So why are you ignoring the Nielsen ratings now? You know, it's it's, it's just a crock of shit. They even draw under a one um, from time to time. What do you think uh, if you were in charge of TNA? If, if somebody finally fired Hogan and Bischoff and said you were in charge, what do you think it's salvageable? <laughs> Thank you.